I don't like AI art. Controversial opinion, I know. Many people may be totally lost and confused over all the discourse that's been going around lately. Tech pros love it, artists hate it. I'm here today to present some of my arguments against AI image generation, some of which has been discussed very often, some of which that's more philosophical, and other reasons that are much, much more disturbing. But I'll save those for the end of the video. This whole situation has rapidly devolved over the past few months. Heck, even in the past few days. Honestly, by the time this video is out, half the things I'm gonna say are probably gonna be outdated. Speaking of outdated, three months ago, I made a video about AI art. It was a pretty new technology at the time, and while I was concerned about some of its implications, I was pretty excited for all of its potential uses. I was optimistic for a future where artists, assisted by AI technology, could elevate the practice to new heights. <sighs> that video is very horribly outdated now. So what's changed since then? And for all the people new to this subject, what's going on in the first place? Well, buckle up and grab a drink, because I've done too much research on AI art for the past few months, my mind is crammed with thousands of words of useless knowledge, I've spent way too much time keeping up with what's happening, and you have to suffer with me! For the people who don't know, artificial intelligence image generators, or AI art programs, or image AIs, or AI image generators, are typically programs able to create images from a string of user-inputted text. I know image-to-image -image exists, we'll get to it later. The main type that everyone knows about is called text-to-image, where after you input a string of text, the program does its best to create an image with the parameters you typed. For example, you can type an apple made out of bread, and you'll get an image of exactly that. Or a man drinking from a gas pump. There was a little content renaissance at first across the internet, since they were a novelty that could be used to create some… funny memes. But later, as the programs began to improve, some very concerning issues were brought to light about these programs. And now, instead of creating absurd memes or mashing together stock images, these generators were now being used to mass-produce AI art. So why are artists against these programs, and against AI art in general? I believe that the problem is twofold, practical and philosophical. Let's start with a rundown of the very basic, practical argument against AI art, which is that these programs are unethically stealing the copyrighted work of practicing artists. The main argument goes that AI art is built off large databases of images, which includes many copyrighted works by currently practicing artists. By using these artworks, there is a very strong case that these AI generators are violating copyright. I'll elaborate more on this in the next sections, but essentially, AI is more comparable to a human photo bashing together images than actually something that draws, per se. If you don't know, photo bashing is a technique in concept art that consists of collaging together bits of other images, such as models, textures, and pictures. Now, humans can't photo bash together the copyrighted works of currently practicing artists. When a person wants to photo bash, they have to use stock and royalty free images that they have legal access to. Essentially, if a human isn't allowed to do it, why should a machine be able to? The main solution artists want is an opt-in model on websites art is posted to so that each artist can decide for themselves whether or not their artist will be used to train AIs. The argument against an opt-out model, in which you're opted in by default, is that they're sneakily hidden away and you may learn about them too late only after your work is trained. Anyways, for opt-in and opt-out to be binding, new legislation would be required for AI companies to respect these opt-in systems. The regulation of new technology is nothing new. As an example, cars used to be extremely dangerous until we applied regulations to them. Professional artists make use of new technology all the time, if it were developed to do so. AI could be another tool that benefits them, but in their current state, they do more harm to artists than good. So, in a nutshell, that's the most basic, convincing argument against image AIs. If you're convinced by that, you can probably stop watching, though I'd still highly recommend finishing the video. Anyways, as stated, it would be a different matter if these programs were only trained off the works in the public domain, such as that of the old masters or such. There's other tangible issues too, such as the role these image AIs are playing in fraud and deception, and 
the ways artists' jobs are being stolen. We'll get to this later. The other issues with AI art lean more philosophical, and for those, we'll touch on them as they come up later. First though, I want to delve deeper on this idea of copyright theft. But before I continue, I think we should really dive in on the history of AI art and how this all started. AI image generation has its roots since the beginning of computers, pretty much. But in the form we know it now, it kicked off around the 2010s. Computers were able to caption images at first, and with this technology, they flipped it around. What if instead, the caption you wrote determined the image instead of the reverse? The technology was bad at first, but it very quickly improved over time. The popular discourse around the internet really kicked off almost half a year ago with two programs. Dolly 2 and Dolly Mini, now known as Crayon. That was basically what my last video was about, but to summarize, the two AI models had very different philosophies when it came to operation. OpenAI heavily sanitized its prompts and had a large list of what you could and couldn't generate. You couldn't generate explicit images, anything depicting violence, and for a long time, you couldn't even generate faces. Not even the furries were spared. Please stay, I swear this is important. One of the points under policy states that you can't upload images which you don't hold appropriate usage rights over. For example, art you didn't draw. Another of these points, that'll be quite important later on, is that every Dolly 2 generation had a little watermark in the bottom right corner. They stated that while you could remove it, you also had to disclose that the image was AI generated. Hmm, I wonder how this might be important. In addition, Dolly 2 was invite only. You had to get on a long waitlist for the chance to even be able to use it. In essence, it was very heavily locked down and moderated. Crayon, on the other hand, was the complete opposite. Pulling up right behind Dolly 2, Crayon took a metaphorical chair and slammed it on OpenAI's head. Metaphorically, of course. Unlike Dolly 2, it let you generate pretty much anything with the exception of NSFW. It was also completely open to the public. Anyone could go on their website and use it right away. So because of these factors, it quickly took off in the online space. Mostly to generate funny meme images because the actual quality of the images were dog water. What people saw were that OpenAI were shooting themselves in the foot with their restrictive approach and the companies to come started quietly taking notes. Soon, new image AIs came to fill the people's need for AI art. Their image generation quality was on par with Dolly 2, and in some cases, especially with more artistic looking images, it was way better. Especially when it comes to anime. Dolly 2 cannot draw anime for the life of it. Like, look at this, this is hideous, right? And now we're caught up to the current times where Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and for anime, Novel AI, are the heavyweight champions of the AI image generation space. There's also a lot more models that build off of Stable Diffusion, because it's open source, but I'll just lump those in along with it. These programs are completely free to use, and their image quality is quite astounding. They also don't have any of those pesky restrictions that Dolly 2 does. You're free to create anything to your heart's content. Even the explicit furry art, if that's your thing. Please stay, I swear this is going somewhere. If you don't think text-to-image is working for you, you could try image-to-image. -image. You can upload your own image to the program, and it'll generate an image with a similar composition to the one you throw in. Now your crappy doodles can become artistic masterpieces. Also, Dolly 2 has this as well. So now, with all these amazing features, we can all rejoice that art has been democratized and that anybody can become an artist. What could possibly go wrong? Alright, now immediately forget all the cool things I just showed you, because I'm about to explain the problem with all of this. These generators need to be trained off something. And that something is the large-scale artificial intelligence open network. Or, Lion. Anyways, it's what Stable Diffusion is built off. More precisely, it's built off a dataset called Lion 5B, which, in contrast to its predecessor, Lion 4 million, contains 5 billion image text pairs. The problem with Lion is that it's a huge data crawl of the internet. It's got a lot of automatically labeled pictures in it, 
scrape from every corner of the internet, which means that it has a lot of copyrighted artwork of currently practicing artists in it. And that brings us to... Image AIs require massive amounts of images to train it. One of these sources, as mentioned, is Lion, which has billions of image text pairs. First off, no. Just because an image is publicly accessible on the internet doesn't mean it's copyright free. Public access to a work doesn't mean it's in the public domain. In some countries, there is an exception to copyright law for text and data mining. Some are arguing against it, however, given the emergence of new technologies like AI art. But the bigger argument is that artists don't understand the technology, and actually, it isn't copyright infringement. Because supposedly, these programs aren't mushing together pictures like a collage. And sure, I can't say I ever knew the technical details of how AI programs worked, and I'm sure many artists aren't familiar either since art and programming doesn't have that much of an overlap. So I went and checked, and yeah, AI programs don't technically collage works like a human does. However, there is still an argument to be made for it still being copyright infringement, if not at least wildly unethical. Technical details like noise, diffusion, and stuff aren't really relevant here. If you want a better explanation of the technical stuff, go watch Solar Sands' video. Honestly, this part of the video was going to be longer, but other people explained the issue much better than I could. But to summarize what I was going to say, the models don't keep any copies of the original art, that is true. However, they do get really, really good at spotting patterns, and also recreating said patterns. What happens when an AI recognizes patterns associated with a specific artist's style well enough that they're able to recreate their work one-to-one, -one without needing to store a copy of the original image? Also, unlike a human, it doesn't have the same diverse set of experiences and knowledge that a human gains throughout their lives, which allow us to add our own creative marks to the work we make. We also don't, you know, ingest billions of works and analyze every little detail of every last one. As a note, being creative is more than just creating something new. If it was, then things like random number generators would technically be creative because, hey, there's an infinite amount of random numbers. But these AIs can't really problem solve like a human can. An AI doesn't really have a conceptual idea of what an object is. That's why it gets it wrong sometimes and places things oddly, like, for example, anime girls eating ramen. So in short, AIs aren't creative. They can't really make any intentional choices. It can only just throw things around based on its observed patterns. So, if you tell an AI to create work in the style of a specific artist, it will, essentially, plagiarize them. Because it only replicates the patterns seen in that artist's work without the ability to be creative with it. It's also time that we talk about the problem of overfitting. Overfitting, in AI image generation, is a problem when the output ends up too similar or exactly like the input data. It's a problem that's been noted to happen quite often at the moment. There's many cases of generations looking too similar to existing images. Some of the images being splat out just have watermarks on them. We've also got the text generating from art books. This study I'm linking on screen now comes from Cornell University, who also comes to the conclusion that in stable diffusion models, quote, copies do appear to occur often enough that their presence cannot be safely ignored. While the use of AI to generate images in the style of a specific artist could potentially be considered a form of artistic expression or fair use, we've already established that an AI lacks the ability for creative expression. I'm going to bring up a few Twitter threads here because they explain the topic of inspiration much better than I can. At the end of the day though, humans aren't AIs. We don't just take inspiration from artwork, we add our own unique personalities, apply our own problem solving skills, mood, day-to-day -day sights, and other non-visual inspirations to our works all of which a robot lacks. An AI doesn't have these. An AI is nothing without the data it's given. Yes, humans are inspired by other artists all the time, but there's a fine line between inspiration and plagiarism. When a human's inspiration is visible in their work, they're capable of giving credit, and when a work is a bit too inspired without credit, that's plagiarism. Humans get in trouble for this sort of thing all the time. AI doesn't get a free pass on this. 
I also need to mention that AI image generators, in their current state, are not tools. They're explicitly being designed to replace artists. Never once do these AIs mention being a tool for artists. Like, you can go on their site and like, control F this, it's not hard. Like, maybe they can be used to generate reference images or something, but like, we can already do that without AI. And also, we prefer our reference images to be, um, anatomically correct. Like, I know what an AI tool would look like. Photoshop has plenty of them, including things like Content Aware Fill, Content Aware Select, Colorize, and more. Adobe's creative director also echoes these sentiments. Don't get your hopes up though. Adobe aren't the good guys here either, by the way. They're opting us into machine learning. I think the term art laundering is quite apt here. Data laundering, according to Wikipedia, is the conversion of stolen data so that it may be sold or used by ostensibly legitimate databases. With AI image generation, it's essentially converting stolen artwork into new pieces even though some of the outputted pieces aren't new at all. Now, here's the section of the video where I explain three things. One, what copyright actually is and what it's supposed to do. Two, how you can't actually get copyright for AI art. And three, why I think AI art is copyright infringement. Now, obvious obligatory, I'm not a lawyer here, but I can at least share my research on the topic. Which, for that first point to explain the rationale behind copyright, comes from the Canadian government. And a bit of the US. Globally, copyright tends to be pretty similar. In the simplest terms, copyright means the right to copy. Patents and trademarks are separate things, they're not important for this video. Anyway, copyright protects an author's economic and moral interests over their original creative labor. So an author's economic rights typically include rights such as the sole rights of production and reproduction of their creative work, while their moral rights include protections for an author's interests to be recognized or to remain anonymous for their work, and to prevent their work from being distorted or modified in a way contrary to the author's honor or reputation. It also allows them to prevent their work from being used in association with a product, service, cause, or institution. In Canada, at least, these copyrights are automatically granted when you create something. You can also register them here, and in the US they aren't automatic, so you have to register them first. These rights last for the author's lifetime plus 70 years after their death in the US. Or after- Also 70 in Canada, they updated the law while I was editing this video. Anyways, since the World Trade Organization Agreement Implementation Act, that's a mouthful. Canadian copyright also extends to all WTO countries, which comprises the vast majority of the nations in this world. I think, really, the rationale behind the existence of copyright as a concept can be best described by the US Copyright Office, which, in their report of the Register of Copyrights, states that, To be recognized for one's work is a basic human desire, and an author cannot build a reputation without such recognition for both the fact of their authorship and the ongoing integrity of their work. By granting an author the sole right of reproduction to determine when and how their IP is reproduced, a form of artificial scarcity is created. It grants the creator the ability to secure the revenue needed to continue their craft by being able to profit off it. We live in a capitalist society and people need money to not starve. With the ability to sustain themselves by monetizing their creative works, copyright law basically encourages authors and artists to continue contributing to the creative economy and cultural production. Copyright is basically a reward for the creators. However, that doesn't mean that copyright screws over the public or people wanting to productively build off copyrighted material. The Canadian Bar Association states in their essay that the Supreme Court of Canada believes copyright must seek to strike a balance between promoting the public interest in the encouragement and dissemination of works of the arts and intellect and obtaining a just reward for the creator. That's why there are certain exceptions to copyright known as fair use, or fair dealing if you don't live in the US. These exceptions generally include the use of copyrighted material for research, study, education, parody or satire, criticism, review, and news reporting. Note that just simple transformations of a work aren't protected by fair use. So, let's talk about how this all works with AI art. Let's start with a very easy question. 
who owns AI generated art? For this question, there's three candidates. The programmers behind the AI, the prompter behind the image, or the AI itself. When analyzed under copyright, there is a case to be made that none of them deserve the copyright. Starting with the case of the AI itself. Internationally, copyright tends to be something that's human-centric. Because a machine is an unfeeling mechanical thing, it's incapable of having economic and moral interests, which copyright protects. And we've got examples of non-human entities being denied copyright. In one case, there was a macaque who took a camera person's camera and snapped a selfie, and it was ultimately ruled that not only could non-humans not receive copyright protections, but that the work produced by them couldn't be copyrighted at all. In the case of authorship instead being granted to the programmer behind the AI, it poses the problem where there's too big of a disconnect between that person and the outputs obtained from the AI. So picture it like this. The AI itself would be considered first generation work. And then the work that the AI produces would be second generation work. That first generation work just becomes a tool to make that second generation work, so there's too big of a divide between the programmer behind the first generation work and that second gen work. Adobe doesn't get copyright over anything people make with Photoshop, do they? And now we come to the last candidate, the prompter. But even in their case, the individual's contribution of inputting a prompt and clicking a button can be argued to still be too insignificant to grant them authorship over produced images. Let's go to an example where the US Copyright Office ruled that an AI created image was ineligible for copyright due to lacking the element of human authorship. Now this doesn't mean that any art with AI involved in its creation would be ineligible, it just means that a human had to be meaningfully involved in the creation process. And this is true. In September, an author received copyright protection for their AI generated comic named Zarya of the Dawn. The argument went that the comic had sufficient human input due to the original story and layout design, and that's what the copyright ruling suggested. Well, did suggest. That was until it got its copyright protection revoked a month later, so uh, yeah. There is a little caveat here, actually. The first ruling I mentioned had zero human input at all, not even prompting. So we don't know yet if prompting would be enough to grant authorship. And it sort of remains to be determined in the Zarya case, so stay tuned, I guess. As a testament to how long this video took, the Zarya case was actually solved while I was editing this video. It was ruled that the comic's text and layout could be copyrighted, since it was human-made, but the art could not. So basically, everything I said up to this point was completely right. And that's a dub for artists, baby! Let's go! Anyways, uh, moving on with the video. I think the ruling of authorship really affects whether or not AI art would ever have a place in the professional world or not. If AI images are not afforded copyright protection, it would prevent their use in professional productions like games and film. And without fixing their main issue, they shouldn't be. The only reason these AIs can have the quality that they do is because of all the copyrighted art these generators are trained off. It can be argued that the presence of copyrighted artwork within the training data not only pose an infringement on an artist's economic rights, but also their moral rights. Especially when the AI is able to make images that are morally questionable. When it comes to litigation, however, things may get a little muddy. The AI itself can't be sued due to not being a human, obviously. And for prompters, there may be a case if their work is deliberately an infringement on a specific artist, but otherwise, nothing's been tried and I doubt anything will really happen for a while. As for the companies who train the AI models, they have some little tricks to help them dodge copyright. Some of them hide under the veneer of fair use because their images come from data collected by universities and nonprofit organizations. Let's just ignore the convenient little fact that the collecting of this data was funded by these AI companies. So the data collected by these nonprofit databases are then able to be used for profit by AI companies. Legally, it's still somewhat unclear whether or not AI generated works and models could constitute copyright infringement. However, given all the available evidence and arguments, I believe that the argument leans more strongly towards infringement than not. Some AI generation models have a far clearer case for infringement than others, and we'll talk about one such later. And certain AI generated works that copy existing artists' works too closely may also be easily dealt with. Most likely, it'll vary on a case by case basis on whether individual works or models can be deemed copyright infringement. 
for the immediate future at least. AI art is a relatively new field, and the legal framework isn't well established yet. That's why it's important for us to make our arguments now, so that the law can update in accordance. At the very least, Stability AI, the company behind Stable Diffusion, seems to already recognize that this whole situation is a big legal landmine. Cause you see, Stable Diffusion isn't the only thing they're making. They're also making an AI music generator named Dance Diffusion. The difference is, Dance Diffusion is built on datasets comprised entirely of copyright-free and voluntarily provided music and audio samples. So, what's up with that, huh? So clearly, they could have made Stable Diffusion with only non-copyrighted works, but they didn't, and it's pretty obvious why. Unlike the art industry, the music industry is quite large and has a lot of litigious ability. So, the obvious conclusion here is that artists are being picked on because they can't really sue or anything. So, while editing this video, uh, there are lawsuits now. We'll get to these later. So then, at the very least, there's a clear precedent for AI-generated images being unable to receive copyright protection. And there's also a very strong case that these AIs are committing copyright infringement. And with that, I'm done with the boring copyright section. Let's move on to a topic that's probably more interesting, which is probably more telling of how unethical AI image generators can actually be. The actual cases that involve the abuse of AI image generation and the bad actors behind them. At first, AI was only used for like novel memes and stuff, but the issues with AI art were rocketed into the mainstream with one event in particular, I believe. In September, using Midjourney, a game developer named Jason Allen submitted a piece of AI generated art into an art contest and won first place. This was the first public example of AI art stealing jobs and opportunities away from real artists. I think this was the incident that really pushed the conversation about the problems with AI art into the mainstream. I'm pretty sure anyone can obviously see how crappy it is to submit a 10 second generation like this into a contest for professional artists. For some reason, if you don't think this is problematic, I think a good comparison would be if, say, Somebody submitted a photograph to a painting contest, or a heavily photoshopped photo to a photography contest. For AI art to be fair in art contests, it would have to be in its own category, like how photography is in a different category than painting, or how digital art is sequestered away from traditional art. Following this case, many more examples followed suit of how AI art could be abused. And from here, things only got worse for artists. And now, rather than talking about what AI art could theoretically do, it's time to talk about the tangible harm it's actually done. For a start, people began training AI models specifically on the works of certain artists. Obviously, without their consent. We already know how prone AI is to overfitting, but it becomes an even bigger issue with such a limited sample size of training images. These artists then just become marketed as styles or models, disrespecting the fact that they're real people who've dedicated their lives to their craft as their work is just stolen to create mass-produced ripoffs. Like it's not even subtle, because their names are just being slapped onto these models as a selling point. When someone tried to create a model of Sam Desart, he very understandably became upset over this clear unauthorized use of his work. However, Tech Bros got really mad at him and basically just insulted him and then made more models of his style in like a very passive aggressive way. Like, someone even tried to make a contest out of these models. Like, it was just absolutely horrible the way they were treating this man. Artists don't enjoy algorithmic collages of their own work being thrown back at them as new work. Not even the beloved, recently deceased illustrator Kim Jung Gi was immune to this complete disrespect. However, training a model on an artist's work isn't the only way to plagiarize them. As mentioned, the method of image generation we've talked about so far has all been about text to image. There is another way to use these programs, image to image, and in painting. Along with just being able to input a text prompt, image to image also allows you to upload an image as well. In the case of in painting, it's basically image to image but only for a specific section of the image. It lets you do some pretty neat things, such as quickly drafting up a crappy MS Paint drawing of your prompt and watching it turn into a fully rendered illustration. However, at this point, it's 
pretty obvious how this feature can be abused, right? Remember the part of Dolly 2's content policy that said, You can't upload images which you don't hold appropriate usage rights over? Honestly, even Dolly 2's implementation of this was kinda unenforceable. And so, images were able to be plagiarized wholesale on an extremely quick and easy basis. And people were absolutely shameless about it. At least before AI, you had to be good at rendering and draftsmanship to plagiarize somebody successfully. Now, any shitter with a half-decent graphics card could just toss somebody else's artwork into a program and steal their work, basically. Now, let's talk about another case that happened pretty quickly after AI's mass adoption. An artist named AT was streaming their progress of creating a piece of fan art on Twitch from the game Genshin Impact when somebody took that work-in-progress sketch from the stream, plugged it into image to image and uploaded it hours before the artist's stream ended. The art thief then claimed that the original artist was plagiarizing the AI. Like, holy sh**. The way the thief acted was like super smug as well. Like, did he not think he would be caught? Like, we can see the problem with image to image now, right? So then, with any talentless prompt kitty being able to create passable looking art, to the untrained eye at least, there was really only one result that could occur. They began to find ways to peddle their mass-produced garbage. And in doing so, also stealing jobs from actual artists. Take, for example, this case, where someone sold a bunch of AI-generated anime prints at anime convention AX Chibi. When they were found out, they DMCA'd the person who posted about it on Twitter. Or this whole get-rich-quick scheme where somebody generated a children's book over a weekend and sold it on Amazon. And it's not a good book. There is absolutely no consistency between pictures, whatsoever. The character designs and art style keep changing from page to page, and the images themselves have a lot of problems with them as well. And yes, it is just a more sophisticated get-rich-quick scheme. Imagine, like, hundreds of these books flooding the store pages. Additionally, people are also locking away AI art behind Patreons. Hell, some people are just straight up selling prompts, too. There's also someone selling AI art lessons? Like, what the fuck? Also, for a funnier example, some people are also turning other people's AI art into NFTs. But at least all of these examples were clearly marketed as being AI. It gets worse when they sell this stuff, but pretend that they aren't AI generated. Turns out Dolly 2 was warning us all along. There's a pretty good reason why they limited access to their program to like a small group of people, you see. Here's a book cover designer who was actually creating their images with AI, but pretending they painted it themselves. Here's someone on Reddit, admitting that they're being deceptive with how their portfolio was made. Here's a quote-unquote AI artist not indicating that they're using AI. You know, maybe, just maybe, people prefer art by flesh artists? And let's not forget how ArtStation, a portfolio and resource site for professional artists, is being spanned with low-quality AI-made reference packs. Because AI-generated art is obviously the thing artists want to reference. Oh, and a lot of people are uploading tutorials on doing all these get-rich-quick schemes involving AI art, and I mean truly a disgusting amount. And all the advice just involves disguising the AI art as real art and then selling it on things like Patreon, Etsy, stores that make prints, etc. All this is just going to end up with a lot of people getting scammed. People who can't tell that something's AI generated until it's too late. All this has resulted in a culture of fear where regular artists are now being accused of faking their work with AI. This user was banned from the art subreddit just for having a style that was deemed too similar to AI art. Artists are now having to take snapshots of their work in progress to prove that they actually drew the art that they made. Unfortunately, this might not be enough proof in the future because, well, programs are also becoming sophisticated enough to be able to generate convincing looking work in progress art. Oh my god, we are so screwed. Let's also step away from the topic of AI art for a sec, and consider that these can also generate photographs as well. I fear what the future may look like when you can't even trust your own eyes anymore. Back on the subject of AI art, there is also a caveat here that while AI art is very much trying to replace part-time and commission-based illustrators, 
it doesn't seem likely at the moment that they'll have any place in larger productions. Many creative directors and people involved in game productions have all chimed in on their take on why AI artists would never be hired for the things that they do. Essentially, it all boils down to the fact that concept art is typically never the thing that holds up productions. Fleshy artists still have very important skills they bring to professional productions, which, at the moment, AI is incapable of replicating. So anyways, that's what I wrote when I finished this script. Things have changed. Very, very quickly. It turns out, like with translation, people don't give a shit how bad the product is if it's good enough. People are now hiring AI concept artists as an excuse to save money by not paying actual artists. And this guy made a whole ass video game using only AI. Honestly, I'd be impressed if the viability of AI art in its current state wasn't built off stolen labor. However, all these examples of small time grifters and thieves are small fries compared to the people on top, the people developing these AIs in the first place. Stability AI, the startup behind Stable Diffusion, is set to be valued at one billion dollars. Here's the difference between 1 million and 1 billion, by the way. Here's a Kickstarter for an independent AI program called Unstable Diffusion, which raised over $70,000 on Kickstarter before they were suspended. We'll talk about this later. And finally, there's a small stock image company that's also started selling AI-generated stock images. I sure do wonder who this could be. Oh my god, Adobe! So as you can see, there's a lot of bad actors in this crap, and a lot of dirty money to be made. Combined with the copyright issues from earlier, we start to paint a pretty, shall we say, negative picture regarding the whole debacle of AI art. When all these aforementioned issues started becoming noticed by people, the ethical issues were finally brought out into the forefront. And, as such, a lot of strong reactions came from a lot of different people. For what should be pretty obvious reasons, artists got understandably upset. And at this point, many sites such as ArtStation, Twitter, and DeviantArt were all being flooded with low-effort AI art. This was especially a problem for ArtStation, a portfolio website for professional artists looking to get hired. And so, artists began to protest. And being artists, they began to make a bunch of creative protest pieces against AI. The creativity in some of these are pretty inspiring, honestly. Also, professional artist organizations, recognizing how little value AI provides as a tool, also joined in against AI art. On every side of the protest, however, are those counter-protesting against the protesters. In this case, a lot of tech bros became confused and mad at artists not wanting their work stolen for various obvious reasons. Anyways, one of these complaints were that artists were gatekeeping art, which, no. This point is pretty easily dunked on. Literally just pick up a pencil on a piece of paper. It's not hard. Hell, even MS Paint works. That's how I got started. Another of these arguments is that technological progress is inevitable, so why bother stopping it? First of all, in regards to the comparison between the advent of photography and the advent of AI art, they're not really comparable. Photography, as a technology, is a tool that can only capture snapshots of reality. You can't make anything with AI art that isn't a part of its training data somewhere. It can only leech off pre-existing creativity. Second, not all new technology is necessarily good technology. You know what else was new technology? Leaded gasoline and nuclear bombs. Don't know why so many people in World War I <laughs> complained about getting gas in the trenches. What is mustard gas if not the smell of progress? Also, as stated before in this video, we pass regulations on new technology all the time. Cars were dangerous murder machines before all the regulations we passed on them, like airbags and seatbelts. Also, for all the people calling artists right now Luddites, everything you know about the Luddites is wrong. Link to a helpful Twitter thread in the top right. There's also a subsection to this whole technological progress argument that boils down to fear-mongering about China. I'm not even going to dignify this one with a response. And of course, there's also the people who just don't bother making arguments and just act like assholes. 
We'll discuss some more counterpoints against the other arguments, like how these programs are quote-unquote democratizing art in a later section. But for now, let's go back to covering how everything went down. Aside from artists and tech bros, companies had their own say in the matter in the way companies normally do. AKA pissing off everybody because of the opportunity to earn more profit. Japanese illustration program Clip Studio Paint tried to introduce their own AI image generator, but that was cancelled pretty quick after Backlash. Took much longer for DeviantArt to take a hint though. They introduced their own AI image generator, and it worked off an opt-out model rather than an opt-in one. Fortunately, they eventually got the hint. Sorta, of, not really. They're still going ahead with their image generator. AI art still has a very prominent presence on their site, but DeviantArt's kind of a hobbyist website, which includes things like photography and beginner art as well, so it's barely excusable. The same thing can't be said for ArtStation. Being a professional portfolio site, the presence of AI art on the site is, frankly, inexcusable. What didn't help was that AI-generated crap was also being sold on the site, being deceptively marketed as not being AI. Because of the short time it takes to generate AI art, it was being spammed on the site at an astounding rate. So, as a result, the AI protest began. So, along with some of the protest images shown earlier, artists collectively began to post those anti-AI images you might have seen. Being artists, they each made their own creative takes on it as well. However, despite the loud and overwhelming message, ArtStation completely missed the hint. The only implementation they made was a no AI tag, but unlike DeviantArt, this one was opt-in rather than opt-out, so it's disabled by default. That's not even to mention that the no AI tag on all of these sites are kind of just useless at the moment. Like, ultimately, it's up to the AI companies whether or not they actually want to respect this tag or not. So, along with AI art's other issues, the protest continued. And continued. And continued. It would still be continuing, but ArtStation began disabling comments on many of these posts before just banning them outright. With ArtStation plugging their ears and hoping it'll all go away, the site began to bleed users, and a lot of artists left as a result. They finally introduced a filter to hide AI-generated posts, but it's taken way too long, and it doesn't do anything against people who just don't tag their AI images as AI. Also, they're not doing anything about the AI stuff being sold in the marketplace. In addition to all this, tech bros did their own little annoying passive-aggressive things to mock artists, because, of course, they did. So as you can see, that's what the Western internet's been up to for the past few months. But I wasn't actually following the discourse that closely at the start, because a different case had grabbed my attention instead. Being the absolute weeaboo anime fan that I am, I'd like to dedicate a whole section to the Japanese and anime side of things. So, historically, AI was terrible at making anime art. Early websites such as thiswaifudoesnotexist.net were extremely limited in power and flexibility since this was way before the current AI boom. And the first few powerful models like Dolly 2 and Stable Diffusion similarly struggled due to a lack of anime-style training data. However, everything changed with the creation of Waifu Diffusion a model of stable diffusion fine-tuned on anime images. Later, another program introduced their own anime-styled image generator as well, Novel AI, which started as a purely text-based generator for stories. Like what Western-style AI art did to DeviantArt and ArtStation, anime-styled AI art did to the Japanese art platform Pixiv. That is to say, it was also flooded with low-effort AI art. Japanese artists had basically the same response Western artists did. This is why when the DeviantArt and ArtStation debacles happened, it really wasn't a surprise because everything already happened to Pixiv. The Western platforms even ended up introducing the same solutions that Pixiv did way before, which is introducing a feature for users to mark if the image they post was AI-generated or not, and a filter you could turn on to stop seeing the aforementioned tagged images. It effectively sanctions off AI-generated images to their own little section of the site. Unfortunately, it doesn't really do anything to stop people from just lying. 
and just not marking their AI generated images as AI generated. Anyways, Pixiv also has their own artist subscription platform called Fanbox, which is basically just Japanese artist Patreon. Like with regular Patreon, people began to paywall AI art on it as well. So on the surface, it basically had the same trajectory as AI art here in the West, right? Not exactly. You see, there's one big difference between waifu diffusion, novel AI, and image generators here. And that's where the training data came from. It's time to introduce a little website called Danburu. Danburu, and other similarly styled Buru sites, are essentially large image boards that tend to host anime-styled artwork. Unlike normal image boards, these images remain archived indefinitely, and there's a large, sophisticated tagging system for each image's contents, characters, artists, and more which makes searching through things easy. As for the images on the site, they're usually re-hosted from Pixiv or other Japanese art platforms. Usually. See, these sites also re-host paywalled material, such as images locked behind artists' paywalled Pixiv fan boxes, art books, and more. Without permission, of course. As a note, I'm not here to bash the site though, since it does do useful things like aggregating art in an easily accessible place, and rehosting deleted works and stuff too. You can also file a DMCA to get your art taken off these sites as well, but anyways. So, some Japanese artists have reasons to be upset at Buru sites. And also upset that Novel AI is training their AI art generator off them. Oh, did I not mention that Novel AI is training their generator off these sites? Novel AI admitted to it in a tweet, as did Waifu Diffusion on their GitHub page. Or rather, they once admitted to it. If you look on their GitHub page now, that little section is mysteriously gone. So, obviously people pointed out the immorality of all this. And nothing has changed, because without stealing artists' work, these generators suck. In addition, these two generators use prompts in a very unique manner compared to other image generators in that it encourages users to input Danburu-style tags into the prompt field. So anyways, that's what's been going on with the AI anime images. It's no secret that people try to stiff artists for free labor all the time. There's been many excuses used, such as our work is valueless, that it's something effortless, or that working for exposure is a great idea. Professionally, companies try to find excuses to underpay artists all the time. Even in society, many people and politicians argue for the arts to be defunded, seeing it as a waste of resources or some other junk. Really, the whole AI debate is just a continued extension of the historic devaluation of artists. Here's the CEO of Twitter and former richest man in the world, elongated muskrat, ranting about artists. Here he is saying that artists should never be credited before not giving credit to an artist. So, wanna hear a funny story? <sighs> Elon Musk is one of the co-founders of OpenAI. Along with the devaluation of artists comes the commodification of art. That's sort of the point I tried to make in my modern art video a while back, that the only reason it sucks is because of the massive amounts of money being thrown around into the industry. Oh, and the money laundering. Many capitalists just see art as a product and only care for its monetary value. In AI art specifically, artists themselves are being treated as nothing more than commodities. Just a fun little phrase to throw in a prompt to enhance it a bit. These are real people who dedicated their lives to the pursuit of art and mastery of their skill. With AI, they're just being treated as options in a list. They're being dehumanized. To these programs, there's no difference between how trail cam a picture is or how Sam Yang it is. The human input on the creative process is also something that AI defenders don't really consider. The artist is more than just a machine that draws pictures. And the creative process is more than just the mechanical act of drawing and rendering. This ties into the previous point of the devaluation of art, where the only thing that's valued are the final products, regardless of the steps taken to get there in the first place. One of these examples of human inputs on art is, of course, common sense. Artists know that we don't use our hands to eat noodles, or that humans have five fingers, or that our fingers also don't turn into said noodles. 
An AI also doesn't understand biases inherent in its data or in society as a whole. An example of this would be back in 2016, where there was a huge controversy where Google's image search algorithm displayed some very different results when you searched for three black teenagers versus three white teenagers. Another is that, right now, if you search for the term Asian on the Lion database, which Stable Diffusion is trained on, you get a lot of, uh, explicit results. Another of human's input on art is, of course, our individual art style and the subtle touches that differentiate artists. Personally, and I apologize to the other artists watching, I don't quite believe in souls or a fundamental human aspect to images. However, there's definitely something to be said about the homogenization of art. It makes sense because these AI art generators do tend to average out the features of the art it's training from. It really gives these generations a sort of for lack of a better term, soulless feeling. That's how we ended up with the stock image watermarks. As a result, you don't get any dynamic posing, compositions that play with values and leading lines, or little details that assist in visual storytelling. You tend to just get static portraits of a waste up character. Rendered well at a glance, sure, but the illusion breaks as soon as you look more closely. A point I touched upon in the reactions to AI art section of this video was the idea that these generators were democratizing art. There's this idea that AI generation opens up art to people who don't know how to draw, which is bullshit. Art isn't something being gatekept away from people. Anyone can pick up a pencil and paper and start drawing. This was one of the great things about modern art. It was a form of art accessible to anyone with paint to slash around. There's no big artist saying you can't become an artist. We've already went over how little money artists actually make. The whole reason visual artists are being exploited like we are is because we don't have much in terms of litigious ability, like the music industry does. So, these people are clearly idiots. However, what we need to establish is the difference between the loose term of art and professional artists. Anyone can create art. Yes, but not everyone can create professional illustration, nor is anyone entitled to. I've already mentioned in one of the previous parts of this video, but nobody in the professional world is gonna hire an AI artist when it's more likely that they end up just hiring actual illustrators to clean up AI generations, as it were. Being good at prompting isn't gonna land you a job. In fact, AI isn't really gonna create any new jobs. In fact, all it's gonna do is gatekeep the less experienced people from entering in the first place, because what's the point if you can't draw better than an AI? Like, why try? That's where I have the problem with the term artist, because it doesn't meaningfully differentiate between someone who doodles in their free time and people making a living off commercial illustration or animation. However, a lot of people mistakenly believe that AI art is gonna let them become professional illustrators. Like, if I'm good at ordering at Subway, that doesn't mean I'm a professional chef, or hell, even a regular chef. With AI art, you're not the one creating anything. The machine is. This whole talk of democratizing art is nothing more than a fabrication. There's nothing to democratize. With all these sophisticated AI programs floating around, I wonder how many amateur artists will be turned off from professionally pursuing the arts. There's likely to be many amateur artists who are satisfied with the level of quality that AI can generate, so they give up and never pursue art further than that. Or, alternatively, there's also likely to be many artists who are instead daunted and turned away by the level of quality AI is able to create, reasoning that there wouldn't be a point to pursuing professional art because there's no space left for them. Ironically, this AI is more of a gatekeeper than any human could ever be. There's a beauty of the artist's journey that may also be lost with the advent of AI. How many artists will instead turn to AI generation for a quick fix to feel like they're skilled at art? AI incentivizes budding artists to give up creation and to simply consume. Their imaginations will be lost as they compromise with pumped out generic amalgamations that vaguely resemble their imagination. A lot of people claim that AI allows people to finally express their imagination, but I don't think that's the case. 
I've used these generators myself, and what it does is force you to compromise. These programs are like slot machines, with each generation being a roll of the slots. Maybe you'll get something similar to what you wanted, most of the time you're getting crap. You keep going, playing around with the input text, until you end up with one image that's good enough. But the things you get would never be as good as the things in your mind. It's always a compromise. And if the result is better than anything you can picture, I'm sorry for your loss. The point here, though, is that this isn't art. This is a gotcha game. If adopted on a mass scale, it would truly be the death of creativity. This isn't a surprise, though. Capitalism wants everything to be commodified. Turns out, gambling is quite addictive and profitable. It's happened to video games. They're also trying to make it happen with art. If you don't think AI art is similar to gambling, let's take a look at Dolly 2 and Novel AI. These two work off credit systems, which mean you have to pay for each generation that you make. You know, like a slot machine. So then, how do we change the future? In the short term for art websites, at least, the common solution seems to be shoving AI art off into its own little section of the site. But personally, I'm more in favor of a total ban on AI art. Just like, make a separate website for it or something. As for the image generators themselves, the people making them need to respect artists when they choose to opt out or want their work removed from the model's training data. As an example, one of these models, Civit AI, announced that they'd comply with takedown requests from artists if or when a model is tuned to imitate them specifically. <sighs> the creator of Civit AI was also the one who made that Sam Desart model contest. So I'm really not counting on the people who make the AIs to really do anything to help. So, then, the solution turns to litigation. There's now two lawsuits that are going on against AI companies. One is a trio of artists whose images have been found in the training data of these programs and have launched a class action lawsuit against Stability AI, Midjourney, and DeviantArt. The other lawsuit involves stock image website Getty Images, who are suiting Stability AI for scraping off of them. So, I'm just gonna toss out the next little bit of the video that would have theorized about how there wouldn't be any lawsuits and nothing would change, but hey, now, hope these lawsuits succeed. Still though, everything's up in the air, and the results of these cases will likely set a precedent for what's to come, so I guess, uh, stay tuned. In addition, there are plenty of organizations that do advocate for artists. One of them, the Concept Art Association, is currently raising money on GoFundMe to help lobby for artists' rights. Some people have attempted to discredit this fundraiser, but those people are also easily discredited in turn. Anyways, I've linked this fundraiser in the description if you want to donate. I'm sure plenty of people still don't know what to expect going forwards. However, we do have a case study for an industry that AI did manage to automate, the translation industry. For the sake of cutting costs, jobs were outsourced to machines, which had terrible quality, but they weren't bad enough that they were unusable. Machine translators struggle in many respects, like context. For example, Japanese has various honorifics when addressing people and personal pronouns when referring to oneself. However, when translating from English to Japanese, translators have no idea which to use. And so, English to Japanese translated text ends up reading to stuffy and formal as a result, since they choose the most neutral and default option. Automatic translators also don't take into account cultural nuances and differences, resulting in sentences that read too literally. AI is making shocking advances in other fields too, like video and text-to-speech synthesis as well. Okay, guys, who, who's ready to fucking kill the Ender Dragon? I have to say that I, I think we're actually ready. Like, just look at all this gear we got. Yeah, sure, we're, we're ready to, uh, to kill this Ender Dragon. But... There's articles and blogs which are now being written by AI without any human input. One science fiction magazine had to close their submissions after being spammed by hundreds of AI submissions. And there's a robot lawyer representing a defendant soon. Actually, not anymore. Thank God for that. And don't think you're safe either, tech bros. AI can and will replace you as a programmer as well. Just look at ChatGPT. So, if you've made it this far into the video and are still not convinced by everything I've said so far, hang on for just a bit longer. 
I mentioned back at the start of the video that there was still one other problem with AI image generation that wasn't talked about much. I'm going to give a content warning first. If you're deeply uncomfortable with the subject matter being discussed within like the first few seconds, you can probably skip ahead to the end using the chapters below. Anyway, it's time to talk about the most disturbing unethical things that AI image generation can be used for. AI image generators can create NSFW pictures. They can also make images of children. I invite you to draw the only inference that can be made with these two facts. For AI image generation, the it's fictional so it doesn't harm anybody defense fails here when you consider that images of real children were used to train these generators. Now I could include examples of these generations. But, for obvious reasons, I am not going to. However, you don't need to take my word for it, because not only is it not difficult to do at all with stock-stable diffusion, but the results can look exactly like photographs. Not only that, but it's very easy to find on the open internet as well. Even the attempted stylization of such subject matter ends up looking very disturbingly realistic. And besides, We've already established how prone AI is to overfitting. In one case, Lenza AI, an app that generates stylized portraits of photos you submit, reportedly has a problem with sexualizing people's photos. Generating unclothed images of not only women from clothed images with headshots only, but also children. But pictures of children and not safe for work aren't the only things present in the databases used to train these generators. Along with these are other images which these generators should really not be creating derivatives of, including non-consensual pornography and ISIS executions. Let's also not forget the other features of AI that can be easily abused, such as image-to-image -image and in-painting, which, for example, can be used to create easy nude filters of anybody in a photograph. Sure, you could do it in Photoshop, but AI lowers the barrier to entry quite considerably. And, you know, can also generate the bodies of children. Stable Diffusion 2, fortunately, is removing the ability to generate NSFW content. However, since Stable Diffusion is an open source model, that means others are free to build off it to create their own models. And so, enter Unstable Diffusion, a quote-unquote unrestricted model seeking funding on Kickstarter. Reading between the lines on the reasoning behind their project, especially when they talk about censorship and pushing the boundaries, it's pretty obvious what their intentions are. Oh, and there's also the issue of people's photographs and artists' work being included in the training data, along with the caveat that it's a model specifically designed to create explicit images. Fortunately, it was suspended off Kickstarter. Knowing what we do though, the reactions of Unstable Diffusion's defenders become pretty disturbing. There's pretty clear deception going on with their use of words in response, such as censorship, false reports, and stifling innovation, yet no mention of the clear reason why it was banned in the first place. So, as a result, they instead moved to Patreon, which also banned them, thankfully. I'm not a Puritan. I'm all for R18 positivity, but not when it's built off other people's images without their consent, as well as images of actual children. Many people, particularly those in tech, wonder why artists appear to be so hostile towards AI art. Personally, I wanted to like AI art. I really did. And that's not just me saying it, I was, legitimately, extremely excited about the possibilities of AI image generation. When I heard about Dolly 2, I immediately sent in my application to get onto their waitlist. When I was accepted, I was excited to share the generations that I was able to coax the model into generating. When I found out about novel AI, back when they were just a text generator, my mind went wild with how fun it could be. I loved all the funny memes when Dolly Mini took the internet by storm. But, with all the problems that we see from AI art today, 
As an artist, it's hard not to lose my enthusiasm for the technology. Before, if these image AIs worked on an opt-in model, I would have gladly opted in. But after seeing the disrespect towards artists and assholes who want our careers to die and for us to starve, well, my mind has changed. I've since opted out on every platform that has it as an option. If you're still interested in the subject, there's a lot of other readings and videos that I highly recommend. If you still haven't seen it for some reason, Stephen Zapata's video covers the AI situation quite fantastically. I've also talked about Samda's art a couple times throughout this video. He's also made his own video on AI art, which I'd also recommend to watch. An art YouTuber, Solar Sands, also made a video on AI art, which I think delves really nicely on the technical aspects of it in more detail. During the first couple days of the ArtStation protest, a lot of artists posted their own rebuttals to AI art as well, which I also think are worth a read. This one, on ArtStation by Daniel McGarry, debunks some of the most common arguments in favor of AI art, as does this tweet thread by Logan Prashaw. If you have the time or aren't convinced by my video, which I understand, I'm just some random guy with Adobe Premiere and too much free time, I'd go check out some of these other people's work on the topic. They're all industry professionals and know what they're talking about. Anyways, it's clear that the Wild West approach to AI art is failing at its core. Wider changes in platforms, models, and even in our legal system need to be implemented to ensure fair compensations for the artist, especially as people insist on the commercial viability of AI art. Really, at the end of the day, the only change I'm asking for is that copyrighted art isn't used in the training data of AI models. Like, that's it. It would also give the AI better grounds to exist commercially as a tool rather than as theft. But clearly, they want to continue with their greedy little shtick, so they're getting taken to court. I think most artists would be accepting of AI if it was built on a more ethical foundation. I've only seen a small minority of artists being against all forms of AI in the first place. But anyways. In its current state, all its problems just keep piling up. Non-consensual, explicit images, art theft, devaluation of artists, its role in fraud and deception. All of these and more is why artists are so against the proliferation of AI art. And that is why I hate AI art. Anyways, if you like this, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It'd be a great help and allow me to make more videos like this going forwards. You know, now that illustrators might not have any jobs left in the future.